Matter. Steph Curry has gorgeous <laughs> eyes. I don't know. <laughs> I know you wanted me to say it again, and I'll say it till the day I die. Uh huh. He got gorgeous eyes. So does what his What color mom. are they? <laughs> oh, you know, like when there's been a storm at sea. Uh huh. And the sun's setting, mm. but it's already gone down. There's not that orange. It's just like all the sea green and the mists from the lightning dew. Mm. Oh, that's his eyes. Are you taking? Are you gonna write this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> next lyric. Song. Shitty song idea. Just writing it down. And now coming off the album Santa Monica, we talk about <laughs> Steph Curry's beautiful eyes. All right. Um, this is something that I think we could all relate to in one way or another. It is the medical benefits of marijuana, and many former athletes are touching on it, and we just so happen to have a professional musician who could probably attest to this as well. So here's what Cliff Robinson <laughs> went on to say. If you play 18 years in the NBA and perform over an 82 game schedule, you're gonna deal with anxiety issues and your ability to relax. Cannabis has always helped me with that. Even Britain, had this to say, I realized very quickly the prescription drugs, he's in the NFL obviously, would make me feel insane. They made me feel irritable. I'd have cold sweats in the middle of the night with, with, with withdrawal symptoms and a knifing sensation in my gut. Here's one of my favorites. Steve Kerr went on to say, I guess maybe I could even get in some trouble for this, but I've actually tried marijuana twice during the last year and a half when I've been going through this pain, his back pain. This chronic pain that I've been dealing with the NFL and NBA are the only two major sports leagues to test and punish for low doses of THC. Major League Soccer tests for pot, but it's ridiculous. You have to reach 150 milliliters per nanogram. So to try and put that in perspective, uh, the legal amount allowed in a person's blood to determine if they are high at the time of a DUI arrest in Nevada is two nanograms per wow. milliliter. Major League Baseball does not test, I know that for a fact, Good. working with some MLB players. Matt Barnes went on to say, all my best games, I was medicated. It wasn't every single game, but like in 15 years, it was a lot. Dude, Matt Barnes gets in so many fights. How, those, those must be the games when he's not smoking. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Fair point. But he always does have a yeah. smile on his face, like it's hilarious what he he's does. doing. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna mess this guy up. <laughs> we gotta get him on the show. Uh, Kenyon Martin went on to attest about 85% of the league smokes. And uh, Matt Barnes went back saying it's a stereotype drug. It's a black athlete stereotype drug. We're the only people that they test four times random for weed, like why? You're not testing for alcohol. You're not testing for, I mean, these pills that are destroying our insides that our trainers are giving us. You know what I mean? You're testing for weed because you know we like to do it. I found that to be interesting. Bo Scaife went on to say, you got all these drugs that you put, uh, put it, that you put in yourself just to play. They were giving me those things readily, so it was easy for me to start smoking and receiving the benefits of marijuana as a viable option, as opposed to the prescription drugs. I think people overlook that this is a medicine. It's a healing medicine, and the rhetoric hasn't always supported me. I've said this many times on the show. Uh, and even experiencing that as I've had surgery and then I've had surgeries in the past, my body does not react well to any Vicodin, any Oxycontin. Right when I got out of the hospital, I threw it in the trash. Like the only thing that she helped me through that. my recovery. What's the matter with you? The what? What's wrong with him? Sell what? that shit. No, dude. <laughs> That's good gambling money to lose on Andrew Luck. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well played, friend. Uh, so. My body doesn't react to it. The one thing that helped me was marijuana. That's the only thing that helped me in my recovery. And to hear athletes talk about this and how there are so many medical benefits, I just hope we get to the point that the NFL is like, screw it. We don't need it. We don't need it anymore. Okay, the only way NFL is going to get to that point is for them to uh, go through all the other controversial things that society has evolved on that they're not willing to evolve on because they're still worried about their old crop of fans that are holding on to the old thoughts. I mean, we go back to Kaepernick. There's a, there's a large segment of, of their fan base that's like, I can't believe this, oh, disrespect, all this stuff, right? But there's, there's a segment that's not as loud because they don't care because they're chill. <laughs> um, they're like, well, who cares? They need to start listening to that fan base because that's the future. That's where, the, that's where progress in the country is going. And we've always known, I think at some point, maybe it was Steve Kerr, one of them said, the league, the NBA, is more, is, is more advanced in these types of things as far as listening to their Definitely. fan base and knowing how to evolve and actually cater to them. And they're happy with them over. The NFL doesn't know how to do that yet. So they're not gonna get to that point until they understand that it's okay and that people aren't gonna, the way they bow, they're not gonna watch the games anymore. If you do this and do that, I can't believe you're gonna let them do this. Then as soon as they accept it, is when they'll be able to move on. At this mm -hmm. point, they can't do it. They're afraid to. The NFL, this is. Yeah. Totally.
Um, how does, uh, I mean, like, we're hearing athletes that do it before games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember seeing in an interview that you gave, they asked you, what's one thing that you don't leave the house without for a tour? And you said, underwear and marijuana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which are both very viable. I yeah, think those yeah. are good choices. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> but if you had to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, what, what effect does it have on you as a musician overall? Um, shoot, that's... <laughs> I think, uh, well, it started off, I mean, like, in the very beginning, we... I mean, it's kind of still to this point. It's it's a it's like meditation in a way. You know, you 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 prepare your J or whatever you smoke or however you guys do it. I personally like J's. You know, you prepare it, you get it ready, mm-hmm. you smoke, and then you you're in a place where you can start to create and 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 you know, go off the top. You know, pick up the guitar, you know, write some lyrics, whatever whatever you got to do. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's, for me, it's meditation. It's it's just like a spiritual thing. You know. I try to keep it like that, you know. I try to keep that totally. kind of mentality when I do it, you know. It, a lot of people take advantage of it, you know, and you know, I don't know the dabbing and all that. That's that's just crazy. For Wait, what? Me. Dabbing? Have you heard of dabbing? No. What like, is that? Like, I want to learn. It's like uh, people like they get the concentrated stuff, and it's like it gets you extremely freaking high. Like it's out of, out of this world. Like, I I've tried it a couple like times. Like gas mask high? No, it, it's really concentrated. It, it's I, I'm not putting anyone down who does it. But no, it's, I just it's I just cool. think it's just it's just excessive. I, I personally like a just a J, you know. But using the flower uh-huh, yeah. and, and like that. So yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's a meditation thing and I get myself in a place where I can start getting creative and, and you know, I get locked in and I can be there for hours just creating and making music and awesome. listening. Think, and, and Now know. think about that. Okay, so mm-hmm. you create good music, people enjoy it. We talked about earlier how then you go to an, to an event and tens of thousands of people will be enjoying what you've put together. Maybe yeah. when you put it together, you did it under the influence, right? Yeah. Is that an unfair advantage? Oh my God, I can't write a song. And you get to smoke and then write a song and you're better than me. Think about the comparison of that. And then we tell athletes, Great point. Hey, for you to chill out and be able to have a mental state where you can concentrate and be yeah. determined and chill out, as, yeah. as, uh, as, as Cliff Robinson said, to be able to chill out for a minute and actually use your skill, that your God-given skill, to chill out and be able to hone in on it. Totally. I, I, we call that an unfair advantage. I think it's like, I me mean, personally, I, I'm like, we like musicians want to be like sports guys. Like we play sports, and sports guys want to yeah, be us. Like totally. they wanna, you know, like they, it's it's like I don't mean that's how it is for me personally. I feel that like a hundred percent. Drake put that in a lyric. He like, did, yeah, right? Did he not? Ever. Did he not? Yeah. He did. Okay, let's thank you, Drake, for that. It's, it's funny how your but, rivals become your idols because uh, uh, so there's another yeah. line, and then he goes like, and they want to, we want to be them, and they want to be us. Okay. I forget what the bridge is, but with, yeah. With that in mind, like I think like. You know, we're we're both in the same place. We have to perform for people. We have to like go out and we have to go do our thing for thousands of people. Like it, some for them, it's a, you know night after night, night. Sometimes I get breaks and whatnot, but you know for me sometimes it's like that too. It's almost like mm-hmm. a like a, a basketball schedule or something. You know, we got to play, mm-hmm. and and it's just like yeah. I mean, if they need to get the edge off, and they're not doing any kind of like serious prescription stuff, and and and, and that stuff will help them. Like I I think it's it's good, man. It's fine. Like it's it's a it's a plant. It's natural. I don't have to tell people from the earth. Can we can we all just make this happen? It's like let the let the guys a have a little J, man. Let them like get take the edge off. It's it's nerve wracking going out there to play for, perform in for front people. of thirty plus thousand. Yeah, man. People. They're screaming, and you're you're in someone else's house for yeah. some, uh, maybe because I. All my shows, the people are there to watch us. You know, Absolutely. like I can't imagine playing a show where it's like everyone's like, <laughs> "I hate you." Like, I'm like, like, "What?" Like they got to deal with that. They got to do away games and stuff. So I don't got to do away games. Like, <laughs> hey, fuck your mom. Yeah, yeah, I hate your, I hate your music, man. Yeah. Like you know, like no. Like here's Jose, get off that fucking bass. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, they, they get to, they get to, they do their away games, and and I can imagine how that feels, and and you know, so if if it takes the edge off. Let them get the edge off. <laughs> in, in real talk, man, like I feel like a lot of these people don't even understand. Like I bet so many uh, sports, you know, players or whatever, they they've done crazy drugs, man, and no one knows, no one says anything, mm-hmm. but they, you know, but there was a lot of blow in the in the in the past, you know, and now, oh, that was and a even huge now, problem even now, basketball. like you yeah. know, like baseball players on acid, acid, like what? I mean, acid, I think might be kind of cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> that might be kinda, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like it's just, 
I, I guess like, yeah. I'm I sorry. love the equivalent of like I love the idea of the away game for the for the yeah. musician, yeah. where if like people while you're trying to play one song, everyone's like singing a different song to throw you off. <laughs> totally, <laughs> it's the equivalent. I mean, I've like, kind of had like a little moment like that, like because we you know we open up for other artists yeah. sometimes, and those people are just there for yeah. for that artist. So that there can be has, intimidating. There has been a couple shows where. There wasn't much love for us because they were there for someone else. So, yeah. You're like, this was the plan. Like, it's yeah. not like I'm here instead of the person. That yeah. person's yeah. still yeah, coming. Yeah, they're coming. Oh. Just chill. Let us do our thing real quick, you know? <laughs> and they signed yeah. off on us. Yeah, being they, here. yeah, they said it's okay for us to be here. They want us to open. So it's like, that's no. Yeah. And I'm the yeah. listener. understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, the fans at these shows, it's not like they bought the ticket and didn't know. That there was gonna be other acts. Yeah, there. I mean, I think that's nice. You get you get more than what you pay for. You yeah. know, like you get a little extra. So. So how do you get over like that? It's like mental warfare in a way, right? Because you're going out there, you're opening up for somebody, and you know that the crowd. It was sort of like at Coachella this past year. All I read about was like everyone who went to the main stage on Saturday was there all day for Beyonce, mm -hmm. and that's why they weren't vibing to Tyler the Creator. Mm -hmm. And then the crowd was dull and stuff like that. As an artist, how do you? How do you just get over that like mental blockade that you might have? Is marijuana the thing? Do you just try not to care? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so smoking a J or something like will make you not really care anymore. <laughs> You're like, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Like Cat Williams, you know, it gives you that whatever. So, you know, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's tough, man. I mean, if they're not they're not vibing, I mean, it's it's you're out there doing your thing. It's, it can be like you know discouraging, but. I mean, we we learned you learn from everything, man. You got to take it all, the good and the bad, and you you push forward and you and you keep doing what you do, you know. And then I'm up there with my boys, so I look over to the left. You know, it's AP. It's like my boy Ron T Nava and Kelsey and Matt and all them. I'm just like, whatever. We're good. Yeah, we're good. I got. We, I'm with my boys. We uh -huh. we're gonna be all right. So, but yeah, man. I mean, let let the guys smoke. Let the let the you know players smoke, man. Let them have their J's, and as long as they're not doing like all that other stuff and. You know, they're not ruining their insides, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm with it, man. Have you ever done a show where you've had nothing in your body but just, like, water? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm, how would I'm, you say that those compare to the ones where you smoke a J or do something else? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I've I've had some... Well, there's been... For the most part, it's it's I can, I can, ch I can lock in and channel in, you know? So... It's good, so, like most of the time it's good. I've only had like maybe one or two times where I was like, dang, like I wish I was like like drinking or something or I had a beer or something. Like right now, I'm, I'm sober right now, but that's that's easy because I'm home. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So uh, the right. true test is hitting the road and trying to be sober. So that's, that's the next challenge. Yeah. All righty, well you heard it here first. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. Do you guys want full TYT episodes? Yeah. So download YouTube TV and get a seven day free week trial.